In this video we're going to establish a few more limit laws and we're going to do this by using the results we've established in the past few videos. So before I start this video I'm just going to give a quick recap of what happened in the past few videos. So in the past few videos we were always given that we have two functions f and g and then for these two functions as x tends towards c they both have limits which are equal to l and m respectively. And then first of all I defined a function called f plus g so in those videos, I always use h for the name of the newly defined function just to save myself time. But in this case, I'm just going to use the notation f plus g to represent a function whose outputs are defined to be equal to f of x plus g of x. So f plus g is the name of this function whose outputs are defined to be equal to f of x plus g of x. So the sum of the outputs of these two functions, f and g. And then we also defined another function this time I'm going to call it f times g and then the outputs of f times g is equal to f of x times g of x and then we also had another function let's call it 1 over g and then the function 1 over g will uh, give you outputs that are defined as 1 divided by g of x and so for these three separate functions we found out in the previous videos using epsilon delta definitions we found out that the these functions do indeed have limits as x tends towards c and then for f plus g the limit is equal to l plus m for the function f times g we found out the limit is equal to l times m and then for the function 1 over g we found out the limit is actually equal to 1 over m so we established these three results so far using epsilon delta definitions and then using these results I'm going to establish some more uh, limit laws which will help us in evaluating limits. So the first limit law I'm going to establish is the quotient law and I'm going to do this by first defining the function f over g. So f over g is a function that pro produces outputs that are equal to f of x divided by g of x. And then what I want to prove in this video is that the limit as x tends towards c of f over g is equal to l divided by m. So of course we can establish this by using a epsilon delta definition, just like we did in the past few videos, but this is going to take a long time. Instead, I'm going to use the results that we've already established in order to prove the statement. So I can do this by first noticing that f over g is a function whose outputs are defined as f of x over g of x and you can rearrange this as f of x times 1 over g of x and 1 over g of x is really just the output of the function 1 over g so you can see that the function f over g is actually just composed of the products of two other functions so the outputs of this function is just a, uh, is defined as the outputs as the product of the outputs of two other functions and so that means we can actually use the product rule this rule over here and so what this means is that the limit as x tends towards c of f over g of x is just equal to the limit as x tends towards c of the first function, f of x, times the limit as x tends towards c of the second function, 1 over g of x. And then we found out in the previous video that this limit does indeed exist, and it's equal to 1 over m. And then we also know by definition that this limit here is equal to l. This is given right at the beginning. So this entire expression is just equal to L times 1 over N. So it's equal to L over N. And so there we have it. We have established this statement. So the second law I'm going to establish is the constant multiple law. And I'm going to do this by first defining the function K times F. And K times F is a function that maps to values that are equal to K times F of X, where K is some constant. And what I want to prove is that for this function, the limit as x tends towards c for k times f, so for the function k times f, as x tends towards c, the limit is actually just equal to k times l. So this is what I want to establish uh, in this section. So of course, once again, I can go through an epsilon delta definition to prove that this is true. But instead of going through all that, I'm just going to invoke the results that we have already obtained from the past few videos. And then we can do this by treating the value k as a function. So we can treat k as the function h of x, 
where h of x is a function that always produces the output k. And so you see that the fun uh, function k times f is actually just the product of two functions. And so that means we can actually use the product rule over here. And so now going back here, what this means is that the limit as x tends towards c for k times f of x is just equal to the limit as x tends towards c, where in this case I'm treating k as a, as a function, h of x. So this is just equal to the function h times f of x. And so I can now use the product rule, so I can just break this apart. So this entire limit is just equal to the limit of h of x as x tends towards c times the limit as x tends towards c for f of x. And since h of x is always equal to a constant, this limit is just, is just equal to k. So once uh, I have actually haven't proved this uh, result, so that the limit of a constant function is equal to the constant itself, you can use an epsilon delta definition to argue that this is true. It's rather trivial, so I'm not going to show this. So I'm just going to use the fact that this limit is indeed equal to k. And then for this limit, we know it's equal to L because it's uh, given to us already. And so essentially, we have already established the result that we were after. And now I'm going to prove one last final rule. It's called the difference law. And I'm going to do this by first defining the function f minus g. And f minus g is a function that will take the value x and then I'll put the value f of x minus g of x. And then what I want to prove is that the limit as x tends towards c for this function f minus g is just equal to l minus m. So this is what I want to prove. And once again, we're going to be using the results that we have already established. So we can prove this by first noticing that f minus g is actually just a sum of two functions. It's the sum of f of x and then plus negative 1 times g of x. So it's a sum of two functions. There's this one function, f of x, and there's this other function, g of x, and then its outputs are multiplied by negative 1. And so you can see that, first of all, since it's the sum of two functions, we can use the sum law over, over here, this result that we've established before. And then also, in order to, establish, uh, to evaluate this, the limit of this section over here, this function over here, you can see that it's just a constant multiplied by a function. And so we can use the constant multiple law that we, just, we have just established. And so the limit as x tends towards c of f minus g of x is just equal to the limit as x tends towards c of f of x plus the limit as x tends towards c of negative 1 times g of x. And then we know that by definition this is just equal to l and then now we're going to use the constant multiple law, which we've just established. So this is just equal to negative 1 times the limit as x tends towards c of g of x. And then we know that this is just equal to m. So we have l plus negative 1 times m. So this is just l minus m. And so there we have it. We have established the third law.